Welcome back, how's it going? This is gonna be part two of the fuel injector tester unit thingy jiggy that I'm building. Uh, if you're brand new to the channel and you use oxygen to survive, I'd like to invite you to subscribe because we have something in common. It has a big enough opening on the top that I feel like I'm gonna be able to stick the uh, whole fuel pump assembly inside of there, so that's pretty nice, that's why I got this. This was $6. Also picked up a uh, momentary switch, just a push button. It doesn't lock into place, it's just a momentary. I hold the button down and release it, switch. So I'm gonna have two switches on the unit. My plan is to have like a, a two position toggle switch. That one's going to be just for the static testing where the injectors are always on. The other position will be for the dynamic testing and then I'll be able to push the button and while I'm holding the button it'll pulse the injectors. So this is how I'm doing the fitting to the rail. So previously I said I was going to do a half inch line that went over this. Couldn't find any half inch line. So just decided to uh, weld a fitting onto the end of this. This is a half inch pipe fitting. Weld it on. Now I can use this fitting to a hose barb and runs down. Actually works better because I can use the 3 8 line I already have. Next I'm going to be taking the fuel pump. This does fit inside of my jug perfectly, so I'm happy about that. Why, do you, why are you doing that? Because I'm soldering. So I can connect the two wires. This wire is really thick so it takes a while. Especially with this little iron. I gotta be very patient, and I gotta melt all the solder in to connect all these wires. I can't wait that long. You can't wait that long? I can't. I think you're gonna have to. I'm just gonna wait that long. Turn off your camera. You better not. Why? You ever see me turn into a ninja? No. That's why. Will you turn into a ninja if I turn off your camera? Yep. No, you won't. Never know. I, I see what's, I see what's the... All right, so that should be okay. All right, so I did toss some injectors in now. Got this wired up. I am going to sit down with some switches, some relays, some terminals, and this bundle of wire, and totally immerse myself in this until I get it set up and wired how I want it to be. All right, guys, let's check this thing out. I got it all wired up now. Um, fuel pump is in there. There is no fuel at the time. But, got a couple switches, I ended up adding this one. I went with the momentary switch actually from that furnace box that I showed you in the other video. This is the uh, switch when you put the, the door on the furnace, it activates it. So I, this one feels a little bit more solid than the one that I bought, so I use that one instead. And this is the other switch. So this is the one that activates the fuel pump. And I did set it up with the light so I would know if the fuel pump was still on. You can hear it run. So this switch here, is, this is deciding whether the fuel injectors are on all the time or if I can use the other button to pulse the injectors. So if I do this, they're on all the time. You're not gonna be able to hear them click because You'll probably hear this thing over it, but let's check it out. You can hear them click a little bit. But then the other one, if I do this way, now I push the button, then they run. So that's the setup. Let's put some fuel in it and see what happens. All right, so I did hit, hook up the fuel pressure gauge. I'm gonna turn the fuel pump on just to see what happens. I haven't tested this yet, so you're seeing it first. All right, it takes a little bit, but it gets, gets up there. It's at about 65 PSI, so that's about right where that pump was when it was inside the regular gas tank, so that's pretty good. So I'm not really gonna time it or test anything really too crazy. I'm just gonna test each function right now and see if it works. I haven't actually tested this yet, so see what happens. So I'm gonna do the uh, always on first, and then I'll do the, the pulsing. Fuel pump on. Fuel pump is running, so this will be all injectors on all the time. So 
So it does work, but the fuel pressure doesn't stay very high. That's unfortunate. So let's try the pulsing once, see what happens. That works pretty good. Fuel pressure is only about 40 psi though. Fuel pump off, switch off. So all the same function basically. We have 200 milliliters about 180, 175, 175. I should be able to just pop this off to, at the bottom and then pour it back into my can. And I'm ready to start over, start a new test. Right, so I just want to clarify, I just want to add that at this point all I'm really concerned about is matching the flow of the injectors that I'm going to put in for the turbo build. Uh, probably I'll, I'll probably play with it and tweak it and see if I can get it to perform a little bit better as a testing unit. But the sole purpose of building this was just to make sure that all of the injectors that I'm going to put in for the turbo build are flowing at the same rate. I'll probably end up doing to flow all of them to match them all the same way. Just so it's consistent, I'm probably going to set a timer. So I'll take a phone or something like that and set a timer for 10 or 20 seconds. Run the pump, make sure the test is consistent. And then I'll run them for 20 seconds and then mark the injector so I know uh, what number they are and then what number they uh, ended up being at at the end of the 20 seconds or whatever interval I choose. Just so I know they're consistent and then they match. So. I'll take the ones that match the closest and then those will be what I use for the truck. So we'll do an example of a test here. Run the fuel pump. I'm going to start a timer for 20 seconds. When I start the timer, I'm going to push the button to start uh, pulsing the injectors. We'll just do a stopwatch. We'll do, let's say 20 seconds. Oh. That didn't work. Reset, I forgot to turn my switch on. All right, so now we'll, now we'll start it. One twenty-five, one thirty, one thirty-five, one forty. Okay, so these are in five intervals of five. So this one be at about one forty. This one's at one thirty. This one's at one twenty-five. This one's at one thirty. So these two are the exact same. So that's a good sign. And this ended up being one twenty-five. This one was a little bit better at one forty. So. That's pretty much what I'm going to do is I'll go through, time them for 20 seconds and then pick the ones that are the closest. So I'll give these things a number now just so I know exactly where they're at and which ones to use. That's pretty much the test. Because I feel like it, I want to test uh, horizontal versus the incline angle. And notice that this one did have a higher volume in it than the other even though it was kind of staggered between these three. I just want to confirm or verify that gravity isn't having a factor on this one being heavier than the others. So I'm going to do the same test, 20 seconds, and this one was at 140, this one was 130, 125, 130. So I'm going to do the same test, 20 seconds, horizontal, and see what the volume is.
All right, so that was pretty close. The other one was at 20.29, pretty close. So let's see where the volume ended up at. So that one ended up at 140. That one is at 130. This one's at 125 and this one's at 130 again. So the exact same volume, whether the fuel rail is horizontal or at an angle, um, I just wanted to test it to verify it. I didn't think it was going to have much of an effect on it, but always got to test it. All right, guys, here's where we're going to do some things and we're going to do some math and we're going to eat some cake and do everything except eat cake. So this is 50 PSI right up here. This is 60 just for reference. So what I did here is I unhooked two of the injectors and I'm only gonna run two of them. So that's gonna give us a more realistic view of how well they're flowing at around 50 PSI, which is what they should be running at normally, around 50, 55 PSI. So I did a little bit of thinking in this and these are flowing so much fuel now that they're flowing more fuel with four injectors than all eight of the injectors were flowing before. So this fuel pump before, just with the engine running stock with the four injectors not decapped was running a lot less fuel than just these four. So I'm gonna only run two of them, which is pretty interesting that two of them are flowing almost as much fuel as all eight were before. So I can run 50 PSI. So let's do the same test and see what we come up with. See how close I can get to 20 seconds again. It's like a little game, it's so exciting. See how that's a lot more steady now? It's right around 50, 55 PSI, which is perfect. All right, 19.99. I'd say that's pretty good for my seventh beer tonight. Um, let's look and see where the flow is. So we're right around 160. And I, I chose these two because I know they're flowing pretty close together. So these are right around 160, both of them. So let's, let's think about this a little bit here. All right, so if we're, we're gonna convert this to pounds per hour now. There is 3,600 seconds in an hour, so you would multiply that 20 second period by 180. So you have 160 milliliters multiplied by 180, so you have 28,800 milliliters in that 20 second period, which would be converted to an hour. So 28,800 milliliters per hour is what they would be. So if you converted that to pounds, Okay, so if you convert that 28,800 milliliters, which would be one hour, it's about 63 pounds per hour. So what that means right now is these fuel injectors in the current setup at 50 to 55 PSI are flowing at 63 pounds per hour. Factory, the rating is 28 pounds per hour, but keep in mind, uh, I did test the frequency on that frequency inverter and it's only around like 33 Hertz. So that's equivalent to about 3,600 to 4,000 RPM on the engine. There's 63 pounds of fuel at around 3,600 RPM. So at around 6,000 RPM, they're probably gonna pick up about 20%. So my math, they're probably around 72, 73 pounds of fuel per hour, which is right where they should be. Got it? So a lot of my stereo guys will be very familiar with this tool. Um, but basically this is a digital multimeter with an oscilloscope on it. So I have it set on frequency right now. So you'll see Hertz frequency. So just to show you guys what exactly this thing is doing, uh, this oscilloscope is going to show us an exact picture of what the injector pulse is doing from this signal generator. So now you see the graph, square wave, 28 cycles per second, 
that's exactly what the injectors are doing. All right, guys, so that thing is about 30 cycles per second. So 30 injector pulses per second. So that means that's 1,800 pulses per minute. There's typically two crankshaft revolutions per injector pulse because of the four-stroke cycle. So that's equivalent to about 3,600 RPM. I did have that thing up to about 33 cycles per second before. So we're talking in the range of 3,600 to maybe just under 4,000 RPM. That's equivalent to. So that's where I got the math of the extra 20% when doing the calculation for the injectors before. I know you're probably sick of all the math and you just want to see some cool stuff and this stuff isn't very cool because it's just a whole lot of math. So stay tuned for the next video. We'll start slapping these things in the truck and putting the turbo in and doing some things that are better than just doing math on a video. So, all right, thanks for watching. Love the support. You guys are awesome. Have a good one.